Hello, Rich Spazano here from Digitally Fearless, and today I thought I'd do something different. I used to be a fashion designer in, in New York City, and I got into it by accident because I knew how to use computer designs. And um, these today will be very simple. They're not even great designs. The point is to show you what you can do with Affinity Photo. It's not just for photos, and it might give you some ideas to create your own designs. Um, different colors, different shapes. But uh, these are just two very, very simple items that I am going to create right now. And I do apologize, I have severe allergies, so you might have, hear me sniffling. I'll try to avoid it as much as possible. So I hope you like this, so let's get started. So to start with, uh, we're going to need things to work with uh, on your fashion. For example, We'll, we'll have a lot of use of a zip. We'll need zippers maybe and buttons. So let's just create things like that first, just to have them ready. So the first thing we'll do is I'll open up the ellipse tool and we will hold shift and make a circle. Simple. Okay. And in the ellipse tool right up here on top, uh, you can see the different things right now it has a black outline and it has a blue fill so let's just get rid of the outline for now so we open up that and we say none and so now we just have a blue fill and I am going to duplicate that so duplicate the layer that would be controller command J and now what I'll do instead I am going to give it a blue, same blue outline, same color blue as the button. So let's drag that to here. And I gave it a, uh, and instead of no stroke, we're going to make it have a stroke. Whoops, I got to do that again for the color. Okay, we want to give the stroke that same color. Oh, I forgot to click it. There we go. So now it's the same color, and I don't want it to have. An outline so I'm going to say none so now it looks like the same circle but here's how you make a difference you go into this outer circle the one we just created and go to effects and go to 3d and let's see that we are and it's not showing up much so maybe we need to give it there we go. We need to give it a little bit of a thicker outline. And I'm even going to say everything I'm going to have is scale with object just in case we resize. But we might have to resize the outline anyway. Everything is working with objects right now. Real shapes, I mean. So let's just make a small circle. And we want it to have no fill. So there we go. So it's invisible now. And it doesn't matter. I'm just going to give it any color. I'll give it black for the outline. Let's get a close-up. And we'll move it right here. Maybe a little bit bigger. Like that. And then we'll do Controller Command J. And I'll put it... Oops, I must have missed it. Sorry. Controller command, we're going to do J, which would duplicate that. And now we can move that one maybe to here. And I think that works. Okay, so I want to take those two and group them and then rasterize it. So now it's just uh, pixels. So now that we have that, we need to turn the bottom of the button, the main part of the button, into pixels. So we can just delete if we need uh, to delete if we need to delete some of it when we make a selection. So I'm rasterizing that. So now that's a pixel layer. So now if I control a command on the little two dots right here, the two circles, and then touch the pixel layer, edit cut, which is control a command X, and then if you see we hide that, you'll see we have two holes in the button. So I'll just delete those two. We don't need the little 
uh, holes anymore. And now I'm going to take that and give it an effects and I'm not sure which, maybe I think 3D is what we really want again. And so that the button holes look like re they're real buttons. Okay. And so that's part of the buttons. And now the last thing I'll do is I'll take a paintbrush. I don't want it to be exactly the same color, so we'll, we'll look at that color, but we'll try and lighten it maybe a little bit. Maybe try and get a little bit different. We want to make it look different than what, it, what the color is. In fact, you know what? Maybe we'll just do almost a white in the bluish white family like this. There we go. And, and then we will, with a small brush, we click once, hold shift, click again. And we can also give that if we want a drop shadow to make it show that it's really, that it's really uh, looks like thread, you know, not just a line there. And let's see how we're going to do that. Give it a little bit of a drop shadow like that. Oops, I'm sorry, I'm on outer glow. I was wondering why it wasn't working. There we go. We're gonna go on drop shadow now. And let's see. Probably want it to look like a little bit of an offset. Okay, I like that. Now we put these all together and we group them. Control or Command G and we name it button. So now you have an asset of buttons whenever you need it. Now let's try one more thing. We're going to do zippers next. So the way we'll do zippers is I will take an ellipse again in the shape tool. And then I will take a rectangle. And let's do this. And we'll give the rectangle a curve, rounded corners, so we could pull them in a little bit like that. You could do many ways to do a zipper, but this is just one of them. And let's see, maybe a little bit bigger. All right, let's try that. And then we take the two, then we go to Layer, Geometry, and add. And now it's just one shape. So let's take that and we'll duplicate it. And I'm just trying to get where it would go if it was in reverse. So range, let's see, flip horizontally like that. I'm going to give them a little bit of a stroke color, maybe black so we could see it. Oh man, uh, there we go. So we want to be able to see the edges of that zipper. So let's get rid of this one and try that again. So we will duplicate it, arrange, flip horizontally, and do that. So that gives us an idea, they should overlap a little bit, of how we want the zipper to come down. So we won't really be using this one. We're going to do this one only. We do Control or Command J, and then immediately move it down to where we think it should go. And we're just using that middle one as a guide. And once we've done that, we just keep hitting, hitting Control or Command J, and we keep doing this just like that. I'm hitting it over and over and over again. Uh, I don't know how much, I don't know if I could keep doing it. No, so that's it. I may have to uh, duplicate them later, but now we can get rid of this. We select all of oh, we select all of the zipper now, all the zippers, and we group them, and then we control a command J to duplicate, and then we arrange, flip horizontally, and go like that. And we can bring them as close as we want. And then now we're going to create another rectangle. And let's do this. And we will maybe make it a little bit lighter, just so we'll see the difference. 
we will move it underneath the other two parts of the zipper. Give it a little more like that. Bring it like that. Let's say right there where we want the zipper to end. And we'll take the stroke and maybe give it some stitching. So and I usually like to use 2200 in most cases, but we could change it and raise it to however you want to raise it. And so now we take all these together and group them and we go we call it zipper. And let's zoom out. Now, of course, they look a little big, so now we can shape it to whatever shape we want, depending on the size of whatever we're going to be making. And that's how you have your zipper, and there you have buttons now. So let's just create a garment. Again, I'm using shapes. I could draw it straight out, and I'm not trying to do any kind of a fancy, any kind of fancy design. I'm just trying to give you a basic idea of what you can do. So I'm going to create a garment. Take a rectangle and maybe even bring the corner just a tiny bit, just a little bit like that. And then, whoops, we don't want we, we don't want stitching, so we're gonna do a solid line. And then we're going to do another one. Like that. And on this one, I want to convert it to curves. So right here, when you're on the shape tool, you just click convert to curves, which means now it's under the pen tool is a node tool, and you can take this and bring it anywhere you want. Again, I'm not trying to be fancy here. I'm just trying to show you some ideas of how you can create things. And if I click in the middle, I should be able to bring curve there, something like that. Whoops, I don't want that there. I want it curved out. So if I need to make it a curve, hmm, snap off handles. I'm trying to remember how to do it. How about this? Smart curve. There we go. There you go. So it's almost like a rubber band. It, it flexes. All right, and then again here, I think that should be a little maybe longer and down. It's going to be a very boxy design in the end, but we can change it any way we want. Maybe I'll even bring this up. Mm -hmm. Let's get another one here. Make it smart. That's what it's telling me. So I can do something like this. And bring that in a little bit. Okay. We can always change the color of the sleeve if we want to. If you want to make it more athletic, it's up to you. I feel like that sleeve is a little bit... I think it needs to be down more. That's a little bit better. Again, I'm trying to do this very quickly. I'm just trying to give you an idea of the things you can do. So let's put some stitching on the sleeve. Let me get close up. I want to double check this right here. There we go. I need that a little up higher. Okay. So let's do some stitching. So the way you can get stitching is you can select the pen tool. I'm going to go to black. And I don't want the I want the stroke to be stitches. I don't want the stroke to be anything. And just click and click. And then you have stitching. And make sure you deselect everything. Uh, you, you want double stitching, just do that. Control or command. You could do it again, but you can do control or command J and do that. That works. Again, this is only for quick presentations. It's not really for perfect. You have to make your designs up as you go along. And I will try this one over here. So let's do a pen again. And let's try click, click, and then click. And then that's, and it's a little off. So we go to the node tool and we can move that around. Whoops, undo. 
at the node itself. That's close enough. And now let's select all of those except the body. Uh, control or Command G is grouping it. We're going to call it sleeve. And then we're going to Control or Command J to duplicate it. And then arrange, flip horizontally. And there you go. Now you have a garment with two sleeves. And now you have to decide do you want a shirt collar? If you, if you want a shirt collar, I would suggest um, changing the color of the garment. And instead of red, I would make it the same color as the garment itself if we want to create a shirt. So let's try that again here. I'm opening it up and clicking on the sleeve, which is a curve, and picking the color here dragging that over to the body and then clicking that to, to create the color. So if you want to do a shirt collar now, okay, let's close all these. In fact, I'm going to take the two sleeves and group them and call that sleeves. Okay, so now if you wanted to do a shirt collar, we could do, again, we can easily do a rectangle. We can go like that first. I'm not, I will take away the stitching. We can add the stitching later, but, and then we duplicate that. That's Control or Command J. And on this one, we're going to convert to curves, which is right up here on top. And if you convert it to curves, now you have your nodes. And all you have to do, oops, wrong one. We gotta bring both of these down, actually. Something like this, and then decide where we want the shirt to go. We can make this come out a little bit. Now I can get we can get really fancy. We can do a lot of curvatures and all, but I'm just trying to give you once again this tutorial. I don't want it to go on too long, so I'm giving you the basics. You can also do stitching here, just like I did here, but I'm just going to let that go too. So now let's go to um, Arrange. No, I'm sorry. We're going to keep the layer selected. Control Command J to duplicate, then Arrange, Flip Horizontal. And there you go. And you can always, if you want, you can bring the collar closer together, but I don't want to do that. So let's take the buttons that we just, remember the button we created? Let's go out again there we go there's a button so let's duplicate that button we should always keep the original somewhere move that button to the top so we can hear now when we shrink the button because we need to shrink it depending on the size of your garment the outer outline we're going to have to uh, shrink also but let's do this let's shrink it down to where we think it should be we may have to change the effects here. We'll get a close-up and we'll see. So let's put a button right there and let's get a close-up. It looks like crap. <laughs> so let's see. So the first thing I'll do in that button is I'll take the body, which is a pixel layer, and we're going to lower the 3D effect a lot. Just like maybe just so it barely shows. And then I will take the ring on the outside, and that had to do with this, and we're going to lower that just a little bit. And let's zoom out again, and now we will take that button and that shirt. There we go. Take the button. Maybe we'll give it a drop shadow, too, for the button itself. So let's do for the whole group. So let's give that group a drop shadow. Let's see, an outer shadow. Black. No, nope, not outer glow, sorry. Uh, outer shadow. Just so we could see the button better. There we go, a little bit better. All right, now, Control or Command J on the button group. Duplicates the button. Then you move it down, 
And remember, don't do anything else. I did this in another tutorial I have about repeating, and we can do a lot of great effects with repeat. So I'll just move it there, and then from that point on, instead of doing anything else, you just do Control or Command J, and your buttons will go down. And that's all I'm doing is hitting Control or Command J. I'll just get rid of that one. And then we'll group those buttons. And then I do Control or Command G, like that. And now what I'll do is I will take the pen tool, and I'll just draw a line, right? I'll do it on top of the button, but no, I don't know if I have to make a new layer. Let's try and see. I might have to. And I'm just going like that to here, just like that. And I'll move it down a little. I'm just using my arrows. I can move the collar on top of it later. Let's just do that. In fact, I should have grouped the collar. So these three are the collar. I'm grouping them. And the collar should be on top of everything, like that. And now we take that. And we move it out just a little bit more. And I'm going to Control or Command J. Again, move it this way. And then give it stitching and then take the other one that we just did oops let's do that again control command J again and I'm using my arrows to move it to the other side and then let's take this box which was the original shirt and give it a little bit of height on the collar, let's hide, the, I mean, behind the collar, let's hide the collar. Uh, now we can convert that to curves. I didn't want to convert it earlier because I didn't know at what point we may have to change things. So let's convert that to curves. And with the pen tool, just do that. So that when the collar is on it, it looks more natural. And these, are, these sleeves are a little bit high. Again, I'm trying to do this very quickly, and I do apologize, but I don't want to take up so much of your time. I don't even know if we could still do this. No, they're already curved, so. All right, let's leave it at that. I think the shirt is a little boxy. So I'm going to take these two, and with my arrow keys, I'll just count how many times I move it in. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And then I'll do the same with this the other way. Just so I, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Just so I see where I'm going. And then with the sleeve itself, if I take this sleeve, I can move it in a little. Just so the underarm meets. And then this sleeve, same thing. And now you have not a great shirt. It's just a start. And again, I did this very quickly. So that would be how you would have a shirt. If you wanted to do something different, we can hide that. Once again, we can turn these different colors. Let's see. That's a curve. So we can turn the sleeve. If you want to make more of an athletic jacket or something, let's, you know what, before I do that, let's just do, let's take all of this. And group it. And we're going to call it Jack uh, shirt. Okay, so there's your shirt. Now we'll duplicate it so we don't lose the first one. And we'll bring this, we'll hide these. I don't need the shirt anymore, that one. So now I'm going to work just on this shirt. So let's look in here into the shirt. And let's get rid of all the buttons. Whoops, wrong button. Hold on. Trying to find where the buttons are, where I put the shirt buttons in this. There we go. So in this group, we're just going to get rid of it. We'll delete the buttons completely. Um, we will turn the sleeves a color just so we can have something athletic. So we have to go to the actual sleeve, which is a curve, to change the color. And we'll do, I don't, I don't know what your team is. Oh, the beige is pretty nice. So we don't have to worry about it being a team and anyone getting upset. So I'll leave it that way. 
Then we go to the other sleeve and make it the same color. So we drag that over here and we click and it's the same color. And now let's do a zipper instead. So I'm trying to remember where we have, where we put the buttons in the first place. Okay, let's see. Okay, that's the right here. Those are the stitching in the middle. Let's get rid of that. Let's move a zipper here. Bring the zipper to the front. Looks like not very good, but we'll fix it. And we could do that, and we could do that. If we really want to do it right, we can do this. Let's do it right. Let's do that. Let's duplicate it. Control or Command J and bring it down. Try and match them up and then group them. Let's still keep it as called zipper. And then we'll shrink this down really small. So it looks like a zipper of some sort. Adjustment. Hmm. Yeah, hue and saturation should work. I hope. Let's see. And we only want that adjustment on the zipper. So yeah, we can make the zipper some kind of a color. Maybe, I don't know. Won't be perfect. Again, I did this very quickly. I should be, I should have paid more attention. And my allergies are driving me crazy, so I do apologize. Let's try. Let's take the zipper again. Make it much smaller. And you could put stitching, more stitching on the sides and all of that. I think actually the stitching is here somewhere. But I'm not going to go that far. Um, I just wanted to show you some simple ideas on what you can do. We could put stitching across here. We can do elastic. We can do any kind of thing like that. So I was just trying to give you an idea that Affinity Photo isn't just for photos. It, you just use your creative mind and it's fantastic. It's really fantastic what you can create. I'll do some other things in the future where you create ads, banners. I hope you like this tutorial. Again, I apologize for my allergies. I'm suffering really hard today. If this has been helpful, I hope you subscribe to my channel. Thank you and have a good day.